In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create job template files, which are really useful in two case scenarios. For example, if you commonly work with different sheet thicknesses, you can save these as templates to open up without having to make any adjustments to the job setup form. And another example could be if you were creating a job that is interchangeable with each customer order. That could be set up as a template where you'd only need to change out the customizable parts. So we're going to look at both of these in this video. So let's just go to File, Close. So we're going to start by looking at examples where we may want to save template files to match commonly used material sizes. For example, I want to create several template files for the MDF sheets that I regularly use. For example, I work with quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch sheet size. So to create a template file, we first need to create a standard file. So let's go ahead and create a new file. Okay, so a single sided job here, we're going to go with a width of 96 inches, a height is going to be 48 inches, and we'll start by creating the template for the quarter inch thickness for our sheet here. Then we could go ahead and press OK. So now that my file is sized up according to my quarter inch MDF sheet, I can now save this out as a template. To do that, let's go to File, and then use this option here, Save as Template. And if we click on that, you'll notice that our file uh, is a vcarve template file, uh, which is .crvt, so the T is referring to template here. So we can give that a name, so I'm saving this in my MDF folder. So I'm going to call this one uh, 0.25 and then sheet in there. And then we could go ahead and save that out. And that's saved as a template that I can now edit and save as a standard uh, separate CRV file, which we'll look at shortly. For now, we're just going to go ahead and create the other template files for the different material thickness of the MDF sheets that I use. So to do that, we can simply come over here and edit the job dimensions. And we'll change this one to half an inch, press OK, and we're going to go to File, Save as Template, and then here we're just going to call this one 0.5 sheet, and then press Save. Then we can go back into the job dimensions and origin. This time we're going to change our material thickness to three quarters of an inch, so 0.75 in there. Okay, that, and again, let's say file, save as template, and again, let's just change that name to reflect that, save it out, and then we can go into uh, the job setup form once more. We'll put in our one inch thick sheet material, OK that, and then we'll file, save that as a template, and then here we're just going to call this one one sheet, and then we'll save that out. So now I have four commonly used sheet sizes saved out as templates. So how do we open them to work on them for a new job? So to do that, if we just say file, close, and we're just going to press no for the changes here. And then we're going to use this option here. So new file from templates. And if we click on that, we can locate uh, the CRVT files that we've just created. So you can see the four different uh, sheet thicknesses that we have here. And then we can pick one of those to open. So let's say I had an order to machine part of a cabinet that they needed cutting in quarter inch MDF. So I'll go ahead and open the quarter inch sheet uh, template file and then go ahead and press open. So here we're presented with the job setup form so we can uh, just double check those dimensions and we're happy with those. So my customer has sent me some vectors in order for me to uh, lay out onto this quarter inch sheet in order for us to run some toolpaths and machine that out. 
So to do that, let's just go ahead and we'll just import uh, our vector. So I'll go to my customer orders. Here's the order and here is the DXF file. Okay, so here are all my vectors and then I can now go ahead, create the tool paths for this um, and then machine it. So in order for me to create a safe copy of this file as a standalone file that I can go back to uh, and refer to should I need to make any changes at my customer's request, then I can. So we just simply go to File and then we just go to Save As. So this is saving it as a standard CRV file and it keeps that separate from the standard template itself. So let's give this a name. So we'll just call this one uh, P.O. Smith 0620. It's just the, the order number there. And then we can save that as the CRV file and that will keep that separate to the template. So the template hasn't been uh, interfered with. We've essentially overwrit it as a CRV file, but the template file itself still exists as its template. For example, we just close out now and then if we just um, open a file from a template and if we go back into the quarter inch quarter inch sheet you can see that uh, all the settings are still the same for us to use in the future and then in our customer order you can see that we've got uh, the CRV file that we created uh, which is basically the file that we saved out uh, from the template file that has uh, all of the vectors that we imported. So you can see uh, the differences there between the actual CRV file itself and the actual template file. Now, if you wanted to make changes to your template and save those out, that's easy enough. For example, if we just open up our half inch sheet uh, template file, press open there. So here's our file, we've got our job setup form, it's telling us it's half an inch thick. We go ahead and press OK. Let's say I wanted to include some vectors this time. Uh, and then you just simply go ahead and say save as template uh, and just overwrite it by clicking on your existing uh, file name and then just press save and then just say yes that you want to replace it. So now we're going to have a look at another example of a job template whereby you have interchangeable parts. And so for each customer order, uh, there could be something that you just need to swap out uh, to create your new job. So let's just go to File, Close. We'll just say no to this. So let's go to New File from Template and look at a template that I've made earlier. So here I have a folder called Kids Bedroom Signs and we've got bedroom sign template.crvt, so that's the template file. So here I've got a file um, for a sign business that I'm working on creating signs for kids' bedroom doors. And so the idea is that I can take this file and we can swap out the interchangeable parts of this file. For example, the child's name along with the actual artwork itself. Now, I machine these out of 10 by seven inch, half inch thick material. And I'll just give you a little bit of background about the actual file itself. So it is a two-sided job, okay? So we've got a top side and we've got a bottom side. Now the top side we have uh, the child's names uh, with the word room so the idea is we change out uh, the word name by going into the text tool to alter that according to uh, each order that comes through and then we've got some artwork so we've got a little dinosaur here for example if, the, if they wanted a dinosaur um, and that's also interchangeable okay so as part of the business we can change out the artwork we can change out the child's name as well um, then we've got a vector here so this represents an area that would be pocketing inside between uh, the artwork and the child's name to the border um, and then you can see we've got four circles here that represent dowel hole positions in order for us to help keep our parts aligned when we come to flip the material over. 
So on the bottom side, we have just one line here. That line uh, represents a hanging hole that we'd cut with a T-slot cutter. And then we've just got a uh, outline of the actual sign itself that would go around uh, with a profile toolpath. So let's take a look at the toolpath. So I'll switch over to the toolpath. So the toolpaths have all been created and they have actually been created. Let's just go into the pocket toolpath where we actually use the automatic vector selector option. And this basically um, is where we've set it up so that it pulls out any vectors that are on a particular layer that we set by using the selector option, uh, then it will machine um, with all of these settings to those vectors, okay? So we're using the automatic vector selector where we're associating our toolpaths with layers and that's what makes this uh, a lot easier to do with interchangeable parts. And if you're, if you're not familiar with uh, the automatic vector selector option, then I recommend that you go ahead and watch the nested guides tutorial, which you'll see within the related videos to this tutorial. So please watch that if you've not yet done that. But this is a perfect example of when you'd want uh, to use the uh, automatic vector selector option when you're constantly changing out certain parts uh, within your job. Okay, so let's just take a look at uh, everything as a whole. So if we just preview all of the sides here. So this is the top side. So this is our pocket toolpath um, where we've got the artwork and the name. And then on the bottom side, we've got our hanging hole along with um, the actual profile cut out as well. Okay, so this is our template. Uh, so let's have a look at an example of what we'd do if we had an order come through where things need to change out. So if we just close out of here and if we just go into the 2D view and we'll switch back over uh, to the design tab. Now my latest order, I've got an order where we need to change the name to Molly or Mole, uh, and we want to change the artwork from a dinosaur to a flower. So if we just take uh, Names Room, uh, if we go over to the Create Text tool, and if we just put in Molly's, like so, and then we can close out. So we've changed the name. And what we're going to do is we're just going to delete uh, our dinosaur here and uh, we've been provided with um, a basis to create the artwork. So we've got a bitmap, we've got this flower, so if we open that up and if we just size that accordingly, I um, want to size that a little bit more and then just move that up over here. Now what we can do is we can just trace that bitmap just to get the outline uh, and then we can simply go ahead and preview that. Okay, so those are the vectors, press apply and then we can close out of the form. Let's delete that bitmap and then with um, when we import a bitmap it automatically creates a bitmap layer. Now it's empty, let's just delete that, we don't need that anymore. And then with our newly created artwork. What we can do is we can just look at editing that. I only need an outer and an inner vector here. So I'm just going to right click and say ungroup objects onto the groups layer. I'm going to click to delete that and click to delete the inner vector there like so. Now it's important that when we're changing out the interchangeable parts that we're doing it on the correct layer that's associated with the toolpath. Now for our pocket toolpath, where we need to machine everything in between the border, the name and the artwork, um, we've set that up in the pocket toolpath so that it picks it up from the pocket with artwork layer. Okay, So we just want to make sure that um, our new artwork is on that layer. So to double check that, if we just double click on this page here, we can see all the vectors that are currently on that layer. And so we can see that that's okay. It's been added to that layer. So I'm happy with that. So now we've changed that out, we can simply go over and we can just go ahead and say, recalculate all of the toolpaths. It's recalculated everything um, 
successfully and so we can see what that looks like and if we just go ahead and preview that so we're going to reset our preview from the dinosaur and we're just going to go ahead and preview all sides and so that will now include our new name and artwork according to our new custom order and here we have uh, the new sign so that's perfect so we've done that from the actual template so at this stage what we can do is we can go ahead and we're actually going to save that as a CRV file. Okay, so if we go to our customer orders, I'm going to go to Molly's bedroom sign and we're just going to call this one Molly sign in here, save it as a CRV file so we can save that out. And that's saved it out in a file in its own right that we can go back to if we wanted to refer to it. Um, but otherwise, uh, if we could just close out here and if we wanted to create a new kid's bedroom sign, let's say we've got a new order for a, a little boy called Jack and he wants the, the dinosaur or let's say a rocket ship, then we can just say we want to open a new file from the template, we want the bedroom sign template and that will just take us back to the original template file where we can make changes to this one. And so hopefully that demonstrates some useful cases where you'd want to create a template file. Thank you for watching.